Hello, sixth grade math students. This is Ms. Kleffner, and I wanted to make just a really quick video to help you out with problems number 9 and 10 from the homework. So this is 7.3 Big Ideas Math, and I didn't realize that 9 and 10 were kind of like those challenge problems. And so there's two operations happening in each of these problems. And so I'm going to start with number 9 and show you that I can write the problem like this, 5x divided by 6 equals 20. Now when I have more than one operation, I usually um, work PEMDAS backwards. But I'll tell you that multiplication, the 5 is being multiplied by the x and the 6 is being divided. And because multiplication right, are on the same level, of our order of operations, right? I don't have to I, I don't have to do multiplication or division in any order. Normally we do from like from right to left, but usually what I'm going to do to make my life easier is I'm going to undo the division first. So I want you to see that when it was written this way, you can see that it's 5 times x divided by 6. This is the part that I'm going to undo first. So notice I have my 6 on the bottom because when I write a fraction bar, this means 5x divided by 6. So the first step I did was the rewrite, okay? And then the opposite of dividing by 6 is multiplying by 6. So I'm going to put parentheses around both sides. I'm going to multiply the left side by 6 over 1 and multiply the right side by 6, right? It's just a whole number over here, so there's no need to turn that 6 into a fraction. And then I can simplify before I multiply, and I've got the 6 and the 6. And remember, that's just a giant 1, right? It's kind of sideways now. So the 6 and the 6 cancel each other out. But remember, it doesn't equal 0, it equals 1, which means all I have left is 5x over 1, which is really just 5x, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to erase the 1 part of it. So the left-hand side of the equation, oops, I forgot to draw my balance scale. The left-hand side equals 5x. The right-hand side equals 120. That was my first step. Now the second operation is to deal with the multiplying 5 times x. The opposite of multiplying by 5 is dividing by 5. So I'm going to draw my fraction bar on both sides and divide by 5. And again, I have that giant 1 that cancels out, leaving me with x x equals, now I need to figure out how many times 5 goes into 120, it goes in 2 times, it looks like my answer is 24. That's the solution to the equation. Now I could check it by plugging it back in, and I could do this, 5 times 24 divided by 6, right, and do all of that with a calculator, and if it's equal to 20, then you know you have the right solution. Okay, that's how I'm going to show you number five, I mean number nine, just because of the way it's written. I'm going to show you number ten in a different way, and we did this in the challenge. So I want you to look at this right-hand side, and I want you to see that it looks like 3r divided by 4, which is kind of like that one, right? So I could picture this, 3r divided by 4. So I could write the equation like this. But this one has already been rewritten. Now here's what I'm going to show you. Totally makes sense. If you look at 3 times r divided by 4, it's really the same thing as 3 fourths times r. And I'm going to show you why that is. Because if I put this r, if I put a little dot between them and I multiply, and I put the r over 1, because any number divided by 1 is just itself. And if I multiply across, I get 3 times r is 3r, and 4 times 1 is 4. So when I rewrite this side, I don't want to rewrite it this way because I'm going to show you how to solve using the reciprocal. So I'm going to, this time for my rewrite, I'm going to be a little more sophisticated, and I'm going to keep the left side as 24, and the right side is 3 fourths times r. That's what I was showing you up here. So now it looks like I'm multiplying the r times 3 fourths. 
So if you remember, whenever you take a fraction and you find the reciprocal, you flip it upside down. When you flip it upside down, the fraction is 4 thirds. When I multiply 3 fourths times 4 thirds, it equals 1 because the 4's canceled out as a giant 1 and the 3's canceled out as a giant 1. So 3 fourths times 4 thirds is just 1 and that's what I want to happen on the right hand side where you see this variable, right? I always look on the side with the variable and I undo the math. So the way to undo multiplying by 3 fourths, I can just multiply by 4 thirds, the reciprocal. So I'm going to get rid of those underlines. I'm going to put the 24 in parentheses and the 3 fourths in parentheses, and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 thirds. Now, this side needs a 1 underneath the 24, and now you can see that I've got numerators and denominators to multiply. Now this R is kind of in the way, but you can picture it being over here. You can just don't look at the R right now and focus on the numerators and denominators that you see. And notice that this 4 and this 4 are going to cancel out. This 3 and this 3 will cancel out. All I have on the right hand side is R. Now over here, I can multiply across or I can simplify before I multiply. And I notice the numerator of 24 and the denominator of 3. They both share a common factor of 3. So I want to divide the denominator by 3 and the numerator by 3. And then I cross it out and I do the math, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 24 divided by 3 is 8. Now when I multiply across, my numbers got easier, right? 4 times 8 is the numerator and the denominator is 1 times 1. When I do the math, I end up with 32 equals r. And again, to check it, I can go back to the original equation. I, I know the left side equals 24. I'm going to multiply 3 times 32 and divide that number by 4 to see if it equals 24. Okay, I hope that helps you with 9 and 10 from section 7.3. B-I-N.